Okay, hello everybody. Today we're going to talk about eco printing and rust transfers. So, after your mini research assignment, which you are doing this week, this is um, the other thing, this is the first project that's a um, active studio project, not a writing about something project. Okay, so eco printing. Um, basically, I'm just going to talk you through this because some people it's helpful to have audio instructions, some people it's better to have written instructions, some people like visual instructions. <coughs> Excuse me. So I like to have all three. Um, so in the remote version of this class, I'm going to record myself talking to you about all of these things, but you will still have the slides will always be available to you as well online. So you can go back and look at them in your own pace. And I tend to have written, I try to make them fairly clearly, written instructions as well as illustrations for each process. <coughs> Sorry, I have a tickle in my throat. Okay, so we're going to talk about both eco printing and rust transfers. You will be doing both of these things, um, but first we're going to talk about eco printing. So there's a lot of different fabrics and paper that you can use for eco printing. Um, in this class, I usually just have you use cotton muslin because you have to use that for your dye book anyway. As I say in the supply list instructions, you can also use upcycled things if you have um, some old sheets or something that are mostly cotton. That's totally fine. Um, Protein fibers work better for this process, but they tend to be more expensive in cloth form. So if you have <clears throat> some silk laying around that you want to use or some nice uh, white or neutral colored wool you want to try and use, that is totally fine. Um, but I know that that's more expensive and I try to make this class as cost effective as possible. Um, so basically we have plant fibers, we have protein fibers. I'm going to go into this more when I talk about dyeing, about the dye workshop lecture, which, which will be up soon. But um, basically, a, a plant fiber is from a plant, so like cotton, linen, things like that. Protein fibers come from animals, so wool, silk, that kind of thing. <coughs> okay, so the first thing you want to do is scour your fabric. So you want to wash it so it's very clean. Um, and like I said, protein fibers tend to be a little easier in this process, but it generally will work with cotton as well. So for cotton, you want to bring the water to a boil, and you want to boil a tablespoon of soda ash in there. You can get soda ash at the grocery store, you can get it at the health food store. You simmer the fabric for like two hours and let it cool the runs. Now, two years ago, I had a student who was lovely. I was very fond of this student. She set this on fire, so don't do that. You need to pay attention to this. Don't just leave it with not enough water boiling and then if it boils all the water off and the fabric is just sitting in a metal pot, it will catch on fire. So don't do that. Keep an eye on it, okay? Make sure that you monitor anything that's that's on a heat source. Okay, so you let it cool, then you rinse it. Um, printing and dyeing in general work best when you use what's called a pre-mordant. This is something that you treat the fabric with ahead of dyeing. So because we're doing rust printing also, if you want to go ahead and boil some of your rusty metal in water and then add a teaspoon of vinegar, that creates iron acetate, which you can also order online, but it's much cheaper to do it this way. So um, this is a good mordant. So you can use this. You can also buy um, iron sulfate, sulfate or aluminum acetate. Um, health food stores probably the best place to get these locally. And you can soak your fabric in the solution and rinse it in cold water. The soak and rinse is most effective if it's repeated several times. And again, since we're going to be using rusted metal anyway, I would suggest just using that with a little vinegar to create iron acetate. And then you've, you're have you kind of an alchemist. You've created your own mordant, right? Okay, the next thing, now that we've prepped our fabric, is we want to prep our base. When we're dyeing or eco-printing or um, doing something like this, the material that we're using to alter the color of whatever we're, we're working with is called the base. So that's where the pigment comes from. Um, you can use a lot of different natural materials to print. You can use fruit, you can use flowers, you can use vegetable peels, you can use leaves. Um, things with more tannins work best. Who likes red wine? I like red wine. 
If you like red wine, you know what tannins are. If you aren't 21, pretend I didn't ask that question. Um, so if you're drinking red wine and you drink cheap red wine like I do, um, at the bottom sometimes you have a little bit of sludgy stuff. It's like dark. It, is, it only works for red wine, not so much with white wine. The sludgy stuff, that's where the tannins live, okay? So the tannins like to live in the, the peel of the grape. Um, they don't just exist in grapes and in wine. They exist in a lot of natural uh, organic materials. Um, but that's just where I was m most immediately familiar with tannins from wine. They're, they're the thing that gives you a headache, okay? So for this example, um, I'm using leaves. So here we have maple, Japanese maple, sumac, and eucalyptus. They all work pretty well. You can find most of those if you wander around um, the parks in town. Like if you go to the Zero Escape Park on National, you go to Nathaniel Green, you can kind of steal little bits of leaves and things. A lot of people use them for landscaping. Now don't trespass, don't get in trouble and then say that I told you to go steal someone's Japanese maple leaves from their yard. So be careful. Um, oak leaves generally work pretty well too because all of these are leaves that have a lot of tannins, okay? To prep your leaves or whatever you're using, you want to soak them for at least 30 minutes in the iron mixture used as a pre-mordant. So whatever you're using as your pre-mordant, you want to take your fabric out and then set the, your, your dye base in there too to get it to open up and release all those, those good tannins that we're going to use. Next, Place your leaves or your flowers or whatever you're using on your cloth. So you're going to lay your cloth out and um, then you're going to arrange your, your dye base on top of it. Then you're going to roll them up. It's like you're making a big spring roll. So you can use a piece of PVC or a dowel rod to help you or you can just roll it on itself. Like you're going on a road trip and you don't have much space in your bag so you gotta roll all those clothes up tiny. Okay, you're gonna tie the roll tightly with string. I don't think I put string in your supply list. It does not really matter what kind of string, except that you don't want it to be a string that's going to impart color. Has anyone seen Bridget Jones' Diary? You're all probably too young to even know what Bridget Jones' Diary is. A long time ago, there was a movie called Bridget Jones' Di Diary, which was based on a book. And Bridget Jones, our comedic, awkward British heroine, is making a uh, dinner. She's having a dinner party for her friends and in it she's supposed to make a soup that involves tying things in parchment paper. She ties it with blue string. It turns all the soup blue. Not great. Don't be Bridget Jones. Don't use blue string. Use some neutral colored thing. Okay? I've had people also wrap like hair ties, like hair elastics around it. That's fine. That'll work. I have had people use dental floss before, which also seems to work. Minty fresh. Um, okay. So you have a choice of steaming or submerged boiling. I chose to use steaming since it seems like the extra water might affect the print. It doesn't always. But you need to make sure that the bundle is elevated on top of some, like a mason jar or a steam basket if you have one of those. And you need to make sure you don't run dry. This might actually be the step where my student set her kitchen on fire. I can't She didn't set the whole kitchen on fire. She just burned her project. But don't do that, okay? So you can add uh, metals to the water as an extra mordant, but you don't really have to. You just need to keep an eye on it, especially if it's sitting directly on the metal because you don't want it to burn, okay? The time needed also varies. Some boil steam for as much as three hours and some do about an hour and a half. I generally split the difference and do about two hours. Finally, and make sure this is cool, don't burn yourselves, unbundle and remove leaves. If I get too specific on things about not hurting yourselves, it's because I have teenage boys and I they I have to be so specific where they would cut off all their fingers and set the house on fire three times a day. So don't burn yourselves. I know that sounds obvious. Uh, okay, so finally you take it out, you unbundle it, and you remove your dye base. You remove your leaves or your flowers or whatever. And then you can get beautiful things like this. The ones on the left, this is silk, so that's a protein fiber, so it, it imparts um, really well, but uh, muslin works well uh, most of the time. If it, if it isn't really vibrant, if it doesn't look super vibrant, that is okay. As long as you do it and give it a try, I'm not going to count you off if it doesn't quite work, because it's a fickle thing. Anything we do in this class that's to do with dyeing of any kind, which includes eco-printing and rust transfers, 
is very unpredictable and very fickle. You don't always get the same results. Even someone, I've been doing this for many, many years. I've been teaching this class for almost a decade and I grew up in my mom's studio. She's a fiber artist and have been dyeing things forever. I can't predict what the things will do always. It's kind of tricky. Okay. So don't fret. If it doesn't turn out as much as you like, you can always do it again, and I'm not going to penalize you for it not turning out exactly as bright as you wanted it, okay? All right, next thing we're going to talk about is rust transfers. Okay, so first you prep your fabric by soaking it in water with white vinegar. The amount of vinegar, I notice all these little typos in here as I'm like going through and, and seeing it as I'm talking about it. So I apologize for the various typos. The amount of vinegar will vary the result. It's fun to kind of experiment. Sprinkle a little salt over the fabric surface. Arrange the metal. So you soak, you soak it in water with vinegar, the fabric. Then you pull the fabric out and you're gonna stretch it out and you sprinkle salt over the fabric surface. I had, I've had students ask me if the kind of salt matters I don't know. I mean, I guess you could experiment with different kinds of salt. I think probably finer salt is a little better because it covers more, um, more surface area. So you arrange the metal in the fabric or you can wrap the fabric around the metal. It kind of depends what sort of look you want. You want to keep it wet by spraying it with a spray bottle of water and vinegar. Um, and you're gonna let this sit for 24 hours. You can let it sit longer if you want. I will warn you, if you have cats like I do, they love to meddle in this process. The vinegar does not deter them, so be wary of that. Um, also, you might inform roommates or spouses or people that you live with that these things are happening in the house. So you let it sit for 24 hours, you spray it as often as you like, and then you'll remove the metal object from the fabric when you're happy with the amount of color deposited. To fix the design, you dissolve two tablespoons of salt in a bucket pot, uh, pot or a, in this case, a Tupperware of hot water. You soak it thoroughly and then you rinse it with cold water and repeat the salt sork, salt sork, salt soak, and then you'll rinse it a final time and then you'll let it dry. I've had people say that they were happy with their color before they rinsed it. Um, rinsing it can diminish the color somewhat. Um, since we're not wearing it, it doesn't really matter if you rinse it all the way because it's not going to be against your skin. It's just going to be incorporated in a project. Um, if you, it, it's up to you. It'll it, the fabric is less flexible if you don't rinse it, and it has the vinegar smell. Okay, then you get results that look something like this, and that is rust transfer. So, for uh, well, I guess we'll go back. We'll just have that as our background. For this project, and I'll put this um, in the description online, but basically you're going to make an example of eco printing and an example of rust transfer. Each of them needs to be around the area of eight by eight inches. It doesn't have to be a perfect square. It can be a slight variance. It just has to be enough that I can see that you did the project, okay? So, um, what you're going to do is our first critique, we're going to look at these and look at how everyone's fabric turned out. And then for our next project, which is slow stitch, um, you're going to utilize the fabrics you make here and fabrics that you dye yourselves after doing our dye workshop. And those are going to be your materials that you incorporate into your next project. Okay. Happy eco printing and rust transferring.